Yesterday was a very lively, inductive day to me at least. I enjoyed very much talking with the people in the separate room and discussing issues of some ends of the cases which were then presented. Uh, some of these cases, all of them have a common theme, which is basically correct diagnosis and therapy. So I'll go through uh, the major aspects of this kind of presentation of yesterday, try to outline what was taken, what are the take home messages, basically. Um, the first case was um, a suspect uh, pancreatic uh, net neuroendocrine carcinoma. And one of the, uh, let's say, dilemma and question mark in the very beginning, what, what is this type of lesion? And so one of the questions was the correctest of pathology has to be um, done. And uh, uh, we really discussed uh, in the afternoon uh, um, session uh, what are the good histopathology to be required. And in effect, uh, Professor Kloppel commented about uh, uh, the requirements, and particularly in chemistry for tumor typing, which with some of them are mandatory to define the neuroendocrine asset of this type of tumors, in particular, chromogranin, synaptophysin, and ki 67 in order to get an idea of the proliferation uh, fraction of this lesion. And then site determination hints. Of course, this is very much, uh, um, I mean, uh, related to the specificity of pathologists and how they are handling this type of questions. But some of the suggested uh, uh, tests were for a serotonin, uh, for a potential origin from the mid-gut, uh, uh, PP for pancreas, and uh, some uh, transcription factor like, like ISLET1, TTF1, CDX2, which are related to an origin from pancreas again, lung, and uh, uh, CDX2 or from the colon. All of these have drawbacks and are not necessarily the top uh, antigens to be searched for and are not a clear-cut answer, so your pathology will never ever be able to tell you for sure of a potential origin, but can provide you a sort of a good suggestion. <clears throat> the second uh, and most important step for uh, uh, an accuracy in, in definition, and particularly for the stage determination and source was imaging. And a number of tests were taken, MRI, CT, Octroscan, Gallium 68, dot attack, and PET. I mean, some of these uh, uh, were suggested along the discussion. MRI was one of those which have been uh, used in Dr. Stein as well by Dr. Jal. So these uh, 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 weapons were all used to fix the potential origin. It was said, in effect, that this type of lesion was consistent with an origin from a pancreas. And it was sort of uh, metastatic, moderately differentiated lesion. <clears throat> the tailored therapy was next is the second important message of the first uh, case, by the way. And this is a typical flow of this type of patients. It started many years ago and get to the uh, uh, um, practice of Dr. Zhao, and the first thing it was pancreas, and we need the standard care for uh, chemo th care, uh, therapy for uh, pancreas of endocrine origin. So 5-FUS streptozootoxin uh, and doxorubicin. Um, then, of course, uh, the other important message is that you see this patient uh, according to a specific schedule, so you have to reapply according to the situation a different therapy. So I use the name novel therapy to indicate the small molecules directed to different uh, targets. In this case, Avralimus and Bevacizumab. Then, again, <coughs> progression, then uh, approach again, uh, ears are passing through novel therapy uh, applied and again, and timozolamide and uh, fourth uh, uh, step uh, uh, was attempted radionuclide uh, targeted therapy, uh, PRRT, and the fifth step as well with again, an, uh, an approach with novel therapy and the sunitinib. And this was taken a number of years. So the patient is still with you and you can see it, you can actually uh, uh, still taking care, moving to one uh, um, weapon uh, to another one. And this is a typical way, and we are fortunate enough now to have a number of weapons to do this. <clears throat> so uh, the, the take home message from this correct diagnosis first gets to tailored therapy. The tailored therapy required either chemotherapy or novel targets like Ivrolimus, Bevacizumab, TMZ, uh, Sunitinib. So that was a typical situation. 
The second uh, was in IlialNet, and we discussed this the pathology diagnosis, at least in our session, but again with uh, Dr. Sandin to see uh, what is needed, and again, immunostochemistry for tumor typing was required, synaptophysis in CAC-67, it, re it resulted to be a, a case of a typical um, uh, uh, ileal, terminal ileum, uh, CAC-67 low uh, neuroendocrine tumor. And uh, uh, the other important uh, aspect was imaging, and uh, the imaging in Sweden was taken care of with gallium-68 dotatoc PET, which has some potential drawbacks. In effect, what was seen, some highlighted areas in places where you may suspect either a metastasis or a, a, another uh, a lesion. <clears throat> and importantly, the message here was if no morphological correlation, so in other words, no lesion seen by CT or conventional PET, that physiological uptake should be taken into account for pancreas, in particular ancinate process, and along the discussion also from the adrenals. What is probably the background situation is that this, uh, this normal tissue expresses a huge enough amount of receptors for a somatostatin analog uh, that can be light up by this very sensitive and not that expensive method. So that was the major information from the second case. <clears throat> a third case was a complex case taken from Jerusalem by Dr. Grossman, and uh, uh, the diagnosis was lung, neuroendocrine tumor, neuroendocrine carcinoma again. And one of the problems here was to assess exactly which type of tumor we are dealing with. And again, <clears throat> immunostochemistry was helpful, chromogranate synaptophysis in KS67, however, uh, for WHO 2004, which is the uh, uh, classification criteria you have to apply, you have to use mitotic count to do this and apply the specific net neck classification criteria. So in the GI tract, uh, CAS 67 is particularly useful. In the lung, has not yet been, let's say, uh, introduced in the classification system. So we have to stick to a very uh, coherent uh, to class current classification uh, diagnosis. <clears throat> then the second important point was a correct imaging approach. What has been using there was a very clever two-way system. In other words, the first system using 18-flora uh, 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 glucose PET was extremely important to assess the capacity of the lesion uh, to uh, be glucose avid. In other words, if it is highly proliferative. It is a very important formation, and this lesion light up very well. So fitting with a more aggressive form of uh, uh, neuroendocrine uh, neoplasm. And Octroscan, which also light up as well. So it both have a very active proliferative state as well as expressing a, 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 um, um, receptor for somatostatin. This tells us that this, are, this specific lesion was on the more aggressive side, although expressing uh, uh, um, somatostatin receptors. The tailored therapy which is coming through, I'm using the very same aspect, is biotherapy first with Ocrotard LAR, was a correct approach, of course, and uh, made the uh, lesion stable for a while. Then again, a second approach is very typically uh, uh, typical to see many steps to be going through with the so-called tax therapy. So. Uh, this patient was sent to internal revenue system to pay more money. No, it's not that one. It was sent to Professor Oberg to ask this suggestion, temozolamide, bevacizumab, capacitabin. And again, the, the, the situation was even uh, progressing. Again, so a third approach using <coughs> novel therapy was decided upon, and uh, Everolimus acrotide. LIR was applied and the patient seems to be stable. Again, the same type of path, a scheme have been used here. You see first, you apply what you think is the best therapy for that type of uh, biology, then you get to uh, 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 other, more aggressive uh, therapy uh, till reaching uh, the stabilization, which is the major goal for this type of tumor. Uh, the fourth case is, again, a case from uh, Dr. Zhao, MD Anderson, and <clears throat> this is a typical situation. You have few mats in the liver, and this is, despite there are few, uh, is a, a, a secretory situation. But, again, also another uh, 
problem was the fact that it was a somatostatin uh, a refractory patient. In other words, uh, despite having is being syndromic, the problem uh, was how to take care of this, uh, uh, and we, uh, Dr. Jha had to take care of. First of all, histopathology <coughs> was required for a correct confirmation, and again, it sit using the same amamentarium I just mentioned you, chromogranin A synaptophase, NK67, eventual determination in uh, for site. No information was obtained, so still is a question mark where this is coming from, although uh, the biology was defined as a sort of intermediate grade lesion, not expressing also somatostatin receptor. Then imaging was decided upon to take in, uh, uh, to try to see where the, this type of lesion was coming, uh, was coming from. MRI and Ocroscan were applied, getting uh, no uh, clue about the uh, uh, primitive uh, lesion was. Nevertheless, <coughs> telotherapy was required. And again, Dr. Jao applied novel therapy approach using <coughs> pazureotide, getting some good result for a number of uh, months. And then uh, since the lesion was small, the patient had other problems, traveling, things like that. Uh, ablative therapy was decided upon for hormonally symptomatic patient with slow volume disease. In other words, given the fact we have a little burden for it, uh, PRT was considered not decided upon because of the low amount of uh, uh, tumor volume and uh, ablative therapy uh, by RFA was, de was decided upon. A successful method, again, because the patient is stable and alive. So um, there are some, let's say, summarizing uh, take-home messages that we have to think of consider the typical situation of this rather complex and late diagnosed patient. First, we need to, ver to be very accurate for the diagnosis, and mandatory is a good histopathology, uh, a, a, a correct diagnosis. In other words, we need to know which type of, of uh, animal we're dealing with. We need to know exactly if this is a very aggressive, moderately aggressive, or tendentially slow-growing lesion. So it's the path for neoplastyping. Then the second point is we need to stage properly uh, and uh, a number of uh, radiological instrumentation is available given the fact that this, most of these tumors express a, a receptor. So radiology for site uh, stage definition. Once this first crucial step is taken care of, then it is possible to move to a therapy which has to be cut as a special suit to this patient. Tailored therapy is really something which has to do with the normal life of this patient and the type of tumor. And fortunate enough, we have a number of weapons that can be used step by step to try to improve uh, uh, the patient uh, situation. <clears throat> and last but not least, teamwork. Everything can go uh, in a correct flow if all the participants in, within this uh, specific uh, uh, management, in particular the oncologist, the surgeon, the, the pathologist, uh, the radiologist, get together and talk about. Uh, so basically, use your telephone or maybe even better, get together and sit and discuss a single patient. And with this, I thank you very much for your attention.